Do you like doing nothing and getting advantage for no reason? Because it's time to talk about Orphis, a great deck that can function as a little bit of anything depending on what you need. My build is made to optimize flexibility in the Orphis strategy while still playing around its main strengths. Orphis key strengths are, you don't have to commit a lot of cards from hand, you have consistent access to high numbers, and you have access to control and aggro options depending on the matchup. Orphis key weaknesses are, you have a 3 attack maximum, a reliance on counterblast, your strategy is often predictable, and you need to see at least one order in hand outside of your search, or you can't reach Abyssal Dark Knight. Alright, here is my deck list. The overall strategy of this deck is to make 3 columns with an average of 30,000 power and just outgrind your opponent. Now, it might seem like a bit of a challenge to do that, considering the current meta, but luckily this deck has a lot of tools to help force your opponent into letting this happen. We can split these tools into three different categories. Cards that strategically do nothing, cards that stop your opponent from doing anything, and cards that actually do something. Let's start on the cards that actually do something. You have Orphist who makes tokens, and Eclipse Moonlight who makes one token. This is your main engine right here. Why commit cards from hand when you can make free tokens? Eclipse Moonlight gives you a pseudo Abyssal Dark Knight pressure on turn two, because a lot of set two Orphis support only requires a token to get their full effect. Also, this deck uses Cardinal Prima Echo Paul to countercharge and Cardinal Draco Zelgo to help pressure an opponent when they have to guard. It's kind of a finisher, kind of a tool for eating your opponent's hand. For cards that strategically do nothing, we have cards like Howling Moonlit Knight, which lets you replace itself in hand by drawing a card. That's all it does. It's a very poor consistency booster because it's once per turn. The good news is, its cost is practically free, so it's a great backup plan. We also have Cardinal Nord Thumbering. You might say, doesn't this actually do something? But at the end of the effect, it clears itself from the board and replaces itself in hand. Punch your opponent, then leave no impact on the world. This is perfect for playing around cards that can play off your rear guards, like Leonard and Draconic Overlord. Now let's get into cards that stop your opponent from progressing their game state. We have three cards here that all do the same thing. In the Darkness Nobody Knows, Cardinal Draco Alverdrid, and Cardinal Fang Estret. Notice anything in common? They all have better retiring effects than Eugene. These are key in punishing your opponent for committing at almost no cost to you. Your tokens are free, but your opponent's board is not. Let's get into my ratios. For the trigger ratio, we have 7 crit, 4 front, 4 heal, and 1 over. It's pretty standard here. You also run 4 Alverdrid and 4 Thumbarino, as these are your biggest playmakers. 4 Cardinal Prima Eclopa, because you need 4 of a countercharger. And this card can give you more than one countercharge, unlike similar cards like Bulbamine. We run 2 Zelgi, because it's not very useful until late game. Having 2 in deck lets you see this card often by late game without having it in hand earlier. This card isn't awful, but it's just not what you want to start with. We run 2 Cardinal Fang Estret. Because in this deck, it's worse at retiring than Alverdrid, as you can't choose what it your opponent retires, but it still has room for value in the deck, and is an option. We only run 7 World Orders in this deck, because Orders really don't help progress your deck's gameplay after the first 2 are played. Eclipse Moonlight is ran at 4, because it gives another option than just using Orpha skill for tokens. Howling Moonlit Knight is ran at 2, because it really doesn't do anything outside of provide an alternate when your opponent tries to counterblast starve you. Lastly, In the Darkness Nobody Knows is a one of because it's not very useful in a lot of matchups, but it's still searchable, so it's worth having at one. Lastly, here's some general advice for the deck. Don't be afraid to hard mulligan for an order in hand. Even with searching one, the ards still aren't guaranteed that you'll see two, and the punishment for not seeing two is most likely a game loss. You don't have to immediately commit Orphist effect to create tokens. Don't be afraid to let your opponent spin their wheels a bit before going all in. You only need two open damage on turn three. There is no real reason to go higher. Thanks for watching this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and let us know what you think of this decklist, as well as what type of content you want in the future.